Okay then guys, let's have a look at this uh, intro here for polar curve tracing. We're draw drawing curves polar coordinates. We start from zero here and we go round in the positive direction, don't we? Round to two pi is where we customarily draw it, the range uh, there. So let's have a little look at that then. Um, what can we? What properties can we invoke? Well, if we've got a sign involved in the thing that we're drawing, the polar plot, um, then we can use this property of the sine curve. Trig property here, it just simply means that this is symmetrical. These values will be the same either side of this line here. So we need only draw this part here, for example, and then we can just mirror image the other side, or we could draw this side and mirror image the right, whichever we find more convenient. When we've got something involving sines, if we've got something involving cosines, then the line of symmetry is this line here. So we need only look at naught to pi, and then we can draw the same shape the other side. Um, so that's the first observation to make. The other thing is, when we're drawing these sort of things, it's good to look for max and min values because r will invariably vary because sines and go from sines and cosine functions invariably go from the value of one to naught, then to minus one, then back to naught, then back up to one. So as that maps out and varies these values as you go around, you can see how it goes in and out going from a maximum value to a, another maximum on the other side. Maximum negative value and then back to a maximum positive value. And then is zeros in between. So that's something to bear in mind. Use the properties of sines and cosines, these trig functions, to draw these curves more easily. And look for those key points in the plot and just draw smooth curves between them. So that's the first thing to say. Also use properties as a triangle. Sometimes it's good to invoke properties of triangles, and we'll come to an example of that in a moment. And as we said, the third thing to do is use the properties above. So let's have a go at a couple of examples then, shall we? Just by way of illustration. Let's have a look at something like r equals say two cosine say two theta. Let's do that. Well let's do three cos two theta, because then we won't confuse the numbers. So three cos two theta then. So we'll have a little look at that then. Okay, well you can see the cosine, the cosine function varies between 1 and minus 1. So the maximum value R will have will be 1, uh, will be 3, because it's 3 times 1. And the minimum value, so to speak, that R will have will be minus 3. So R will vary from 3 to minus 3. And it will oscillate between those two values and hit through 0 as well, when this value cosine is 0. So with that thought in mind then, we should be able to fairly fairly easily sketch this plot. So let's go round from zero. The other thing to observe is this property here. This is the line of symmetry. So we need only concern ourselves then with the values from 0 to pi. And then we can mirror image the other side through the line of symmetry. And sketch that. So with that thought in mind then, let's try it with zero. Cos 0 is 1. It's a maximum value of 3 there, isn't it? So that would be 3 when... Uh, theta's naught, r would be 3. When would it hit 0? Well, this would need to equal 90, and you can see that if you put 45 degrees in, which we could, well, I'll get a straight line for that, which you can draw up there. So let's just get the uh, coordinate and draw a straight line if I can up there, and um, just put it over the origin there. There we are, like so. So we can now, um, that's 45 degrees. So what we can do now is we know that cosine of 90, when theta is 45 degrees or pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 2 theta is 90, cos 90 is naught. So it will come around from 3 and cosine will diminish down to naught, won't it? So you can basically see that this is the sort of curve shape you come in. It comes in to be a tangent here, so it mustn't cross over. It comes in to be in a tangent there, like so. So, it, because I've got a digital pen in these examples, it does always usually takes me a, f a few goes to get that right. That's a bit better. So there's our um, 0 to 45. But then you'll see what happens to the cosine. I'll just draw it by hand now. But on the second part here, cosine went from 0, from 1 to 0. Then on this part here, it goes from 0 to minus through to minus 1. So can you see how these values here will all be negative and they'll vary from zero on this line itself and come and increase become increasingly negative until they reach a maximum of minus three. And these two, when you draw them, 
Like value is minus 3 when theta is pi over 2. If you put that in by way of a check, 2 pi over 2 is pi. Cos pi is minus 1. 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. So yeah, that looks good. And then the next uh, line, which we should really put a dashed line in it. The next 45 degree point of interest. If we come around now, we're, we're coming around here with our r values. Theta will vary from 90 to 135. 3 pi over 4. And here... Um, R was negative, uh, cosine is negative here for this value. And it also stays negative because it went from 0 to minus 1 and minus 1 back to 0. So can you see this will just simply come around like so. And then in the last part, these values become positive again and they go from 0 to 3. And there's our curve. Now what's interesting is we've drawn it from 0 to 180 or 0 to pi. So now we said there's a mirror image. So all we need to do is simply draw the other parts of the mirror the ref lines of reflection through and we've got the entire curve then from 0 to 2 pi. So there's our curve r equals 3 cos uh, 2 theta then. So that was using properties of sine uh, cosine function and noticing that it goes along this cycle that we mentioned here and it doesn't take long to draw them. They're all virtually the same as that when they involve of this sort of pattern as such. Um, so that's one particular type that's very common. The other thing that you sometimes get, so I'll just get rid of this now and do a quick sketch now because we're um, taking some time up here. Um, the next thing I want to mention just briefly is when you get something like, um, let's just do a, a sketch. Sorry about the lines. So if you get, say, r cos theta equals 3 then, or r equals 3 over cos theta. Well, you know that we're using the Cartesian representation. This stands for x, so x equals 3. So you know that, but if you draw the line in here, r, oops, and this is theta, this is r, r cos theta is here, and that value, this length of this side must be 3. So can you see that the, the only values that will be satisfied by that for all these triangles that one can draw here. So as theta varies from naught round to pi over 2, how is this line generated? Well, the line will go up, won't it? So the line will sort of be generated and it will go up like that. And as it comes around from naught to minus pi over 2, how will it vary? Well, it will go down. The line will be produced in the downwards direction, won't it? As theta goes from naught pi over 2. So as it goes around the circle, can you see that that line is not going to go in that direction? It's actually going to go there. So the way the line is constructed from this equation here is that as you go round 0 to pi over 2, it goes up there. Then as you come around, let's forget that for the moment, we'll come around to here. And as you come around here, you can see the line is generated up again. But when you go from pi over 2, say, round to pi, you know that cosine is negative. So these values, as you go round here, the cosine is negative. So in order to get 3, a positive number, r would need to be negative. So can you see that that r is actually a negative r? And it gives rise to these lines here. So again, you go up that line there. And as you come around this section, cosine is negative again. And can you see that the, the curve that you generate again because r is negative is that line there. So in going around 0 to 2 pi, you've actually gone up this line there and there and there and there twice. So the line is traversed twice, this vertical line, as you go from 0 to 2 pi. So that's something to bear in mind as well. The number of times you produce a shape is also significant. So bear that in mind when we're going around, say, 0 to 2 pi. Sometimes we go around twice or a multiple number of times in producing the output here in polar coordinates. So just a little side point as we go through the sketching. And we're going to use properties of triangles, which we did here. We'll use uh, properties of cosines and sines uh, to make our life a bit easier when we're doing these sketches. So all the best then, guys. I hope you enjoyed this section. Any questions, give us an email or a buzz, buzz us and uh, let us know how you're getting on. It'd be good to hear from you. So I'll catch you again in the next section. Cheers.